uh, Tuesday evening Bible study. Um, last week you left off on uh, the lesson's title, What's Better Than Silver and Gold? Acts chapter 3, part 1. We actually learned about Peter and John. We talked about them going to the temple. We talked about the beggar. We talked about the beautiful gate. Uh, we also talked about uh, Peter's second sermon. This is actually his second sermon that he's preaching on. And again, I want to remind everybody tonight, during this time, you've got to remember, Jesus Christ had only been gone. He had been raptured up possibly 50-some days. So, you know, this 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 time they were the uh, Romans ruled the world. They were looking for Peter, John, all of them. They were looking for the 11 disciples. And uh, they wanted to deal with them just like they did Christ. Because at this time, they felt like they were blaspheming. And they wanted to deal with them. They wanted to kill them just like they did Christ. So, again, you got to set your time at this time when Peter's preaching. But you can imagine what Peter's witnessed and all they witnessed, folks, they, they, they were prepared to die. They were ready. They knew what they had and they knew where they were going. So let's pick back up here. Peter has picked back up in his sermon. Um, the night's lesson probably won't be as long because we're going to finish up chapter three and then nothing happens next Tuesday. We'll start with uh, chapter four. But anyway, let's get back started. Everybody wants to. Let's turn to Acts chapter 3. Uh, let's start at verse 15. If everybody's ready. We'll get started. But put to death the prince of life, the one whom God raised from the dead, a fact to which we are witnesses. So they witnessed this. And there's several people here, folks, in the crowd that witnessed Christ. They knew, they knew who this man was. They witnessed his miracles. So there's many eyewitness accounts at this point in time, folks. Verse 16, and on the basis of faith in his name, it is the name of Jesus which has strengthened this man whom you see and know. This man is the lame beggar if you guys remember back first part of the chapter peter and john run into this beggar at the, at the front gate called beautiful of the temple and again i'll remind everybody this was where this man was carried daily he was he was born at birth he was born a lame and crippled from birth uh, this is how he got his money this is how he fed himself so he would beg for alms. He would beg for coins every day. And Peter and John, when they stepped up to him, if you guys remember, um, they began to give his attention. Peter looked and gazed at him and said, look at us. He wanted his complete attention. And then he began, once he got his attention, remember I told you the beggar thought he was going to get some silver and gold. He got something a lot better, folks. Um, Peter told him, he said, I do not possess silver or gold, but what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene walk. In other words, what I have, I gain freely and what I have freely, I give freely. That's the great thing about salvation, folks. So let's go on. So this man, remember, he comes into the temple leaping, uh, praising God. And Peter's preaching in here again. Verse 16, and he says, on that basis of faith, in other words, this beggar's faith is what changed him. It was his heart. It was his faith. That's why, through the name of Jesus, this man was strengthened, whom you see and know. In other words, you know this man. You see him daily. You recognize him. You know exactly who he is. And faith which comes through him has given him his perfect health in the presence of you all. So you can see this miracle, folks. And this miracle was 
done because this man's faith. This man had faith and he believed in this man, Jesus. And that's why he was healed. Verse 17. And now, brethren, I know that you acted in ignorance just as your rulers did also. In other words, what Peter's saying to him here, you kill this Christ. You kill this man. You were ignorant. You didn't know who this man was. And you had no idea what you done. And like I said, you got to remember the disciples at this point, they still don't understand how far this gospel is going to go. At this point in time, they still believe this gospel is meant for the Jews. And like I said, they don't realize they still have not. They don't, they don't realize this gospel is meant for the whole world. This was the beginning of the church age, folks. In other words, you got to remember this. These guys were in the temple. Remember, I told you they had scrolls. Peter tells the people about the crucifixion of Jesus and how it's been fulfilled. Now, let's look at a couple of scriptures. We can go back and look at some of these scrolls that they were reading out of which now we call the Old Testament. If everybody wants to, let's go to Isaiah. You got your Bible with you. Old Testament. Isaiah, let's go to chapter 53. And this is one of your major prophets, Isaiah. Who has believed our message, he says. And whom has the arm of the Lord revealed? This is Isaiah. For he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of a parched ground. He has no stately form or majesty that we should look upon him nor appearance that we should be attracted to him. He, him, here is Jesus, folks. He was despised and forsaken of men. This is right here is what Peter's teaching them. This is what Peter's talking about. These men knew the scrolls, folks. They, the Jews are still looking for Christ. They still do not believe Christ has come. Well, I wouldn't say all, several. And right here is the scrolls. He's telling, Peter's telling them right here. He was despised and forsaken of men. In other words, you were ignorant. You did not know what you did, just like Peter tells him right here. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and like one from whom men hid their face, he was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely our griefs he himself bore. In other words, our sins he bore. And our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Right here it is. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastising for all, for excuse me, for our well-being fell upon him. And by his scourging, we were healed. In other words, by his stripes. We, he was pierced for our transgressions, for our sins. He was crushed for our iniquities. And the chastising for all well-being fell upon him. And by his scourging, we were healed. Okay, this, this talks about Jesus. This is Old Testament. This would have been the scrolls that they would have had present at this time that they would have read in the temple. So let's go look at one more place. Let's go to Psalms. It's Old Testament. Psalms chapter 22. You guys want to follow along? Let's go down and look at verses 14 through 18. Of course, this is David, the Psalms. I am poured out like water. This is talking about Jesus. 
and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within me. This is talking about when he was hung on the cross. My strength is dried up like a pot shred, and my tongue cleaves to my jaws. And you lay me in the dust of death. For the dogs have surrounded me. The dogs are talking about the, the Gentiles, folks. A band of evildoers has encompassed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look, they stare at me. Remember, he was placed on a cross naked. That was part of the Roman crucifixion. Humiliation was part of it. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. It's about Jesus, folks. So this is what Peter is actually telling them here. He's, he's, he's actually quoting trolls to him. He said, this man right here, this is the man that you killed. I witnessed him raised from the dead. I witnessed him do miracles. He walked and talked with us for 40 days. He eat with us on the beach for 40 days. There was over 500 of us witnessed him. We were eyewitness accounts to him ascending into the heavens to sit on the right hand of God. Verse 18. But the things which God announced beforehand by the mouth of it, all prophets, just like I read to you right there, this is what Peter's telling these prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Listen to this now. He has thus fulfilled. In other words, these scrolls that we read every Sunday in here, they're fulfilled. Therefore, repent and return so that your sins may be wiped away in order that times of the refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. There's two necessary things here that Jesus says, or excuse me, Peter says that Jesus had told them. First thing is to repent. What does repent mean? I'll give you a definition for it. It says to change the mind for better morality, excuse me, morally, to change your attitude towards sin. First of all, you've got to realize that you're a sinner. To realize that you're a sinner and you must be forgiven. Accept Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord of your life. The second part, what he's saying here, repent means to be converted. is to change your conduct. And I've got, uh, let me look at something here and pull it up and make sure I've got the right scripture here. But if I, this is exactly what I'm looking for, we'll go to it. Yeah. All right. Let's go to John 3, chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. Everybody wants to get there with me. Sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will, will not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He that believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So, right here's what he's telling them, folks. You've got to repent. You've got to change your ways. And first, you have to believe. Verse 20. And that he may send Jesus the Christ appointed to you. Verse 21. Whom heaven must receive until the period of restoration of all things about 
which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from ancient time. Now, I'm going to read this verse again, and I'm going, to, I'm going to explain it to you a little bit, okay? Whom heaven must receive until the period of restoration of all things, about which God spoke by the mouth of his, own, uh, by his holy prophets from ancient time. In other words... What's restoration mean? Well, I'll give you a definition. A complete restoration or reestablishment. In other words, Peter here is telling these men, Jesus had to ascend into heaven. Like I said, Peter didn't realize yet how vast. It's been over 2,000 years. We've been in a church age. God told him, told his disciples to go out into all the world and teach the gospel, preach the gospel. Now, whosoever will, let them come. Well, right here, Peter's telling them, but he still doesn't understand what he's saying here. He's saying this was planned. This, from the, from the day the Bible was written, from the day God created the heavens and the earth, if you want to go all the way back to that far, God knew he would have to give his son for the ultimate sacrifice for all sins. And we see here, Peter's telling them, from heaven must receive until the period of restoration. In other words, Christ is going to stay in heaven. He's going to come back. And, and there's, I'm telling you, folks, any day now, Christ is going to come back and receive his church. It could be five minutes from now. It could be three weeks down the road. It could be a couple of years. It could be a few years. But I'm telling you, folks, the signs of the times, the only thing, there's nothing left other than Christ to return and receive the church. Now, what he's saying here, he's not telling about, see, there's a, Christ is going to come to the clouds first. He's not coming back to the earth yet. The Bible says a trump of God will blow. The dead in Christ will rise first. And then us that's alive and remain will be caught up to meet him in the air. So Christ is going to come in the clouds. He's going to collect the saints. What he's saying here, restoration, is going to be the millennial reign of Christ. When Christ actually comes back to this earth, earth and sets his kingdom up. That's exactly what he's saying. Restitution of all things. Spoken by the prophets. Uh, Enoch even prophesied on the second advent. And... We could go back and look at that, but we'll move on. The point of the matter is here, this was set in order. This was the way it's supposed to go. And he's telling, he's telling them here, Christ, this was Christ, what Christ's supposed to do. Right now, he's sitting at the right hand of Father he, until the period of restoration, when Christ actually comes back to this earth and takes control or charge. Now, the disciples, again, this is not biblical. This is my opinion. I think the disciples didn't think this was going to be a long period. I think they 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 thought before Christ was crucified, they thought that he was going to set his millennial reign up then. They still at this point do not understand how far the church age is going to go. Like I said, you're going to see a little later on, Peter is going to argue with Jesus and saying, no, I'm not going into a Gentile house. And you're going to see the first Gentile saved, which is Cornelius and his family. Then it's then then the disciples are going to see that this is for more than the Jews. So let's move on. Verse 22. I hope I explained that well enough. Moses said, the Lord God will raise you, raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren to him. You shall give heed to everything he says to you. If you guys want to go back and look at this, this is Deuteronomy 18, 15, and 18. In other words, you will find, if you go back and study it out in the, in the scriptures, you will find Jesus spoken about all the way through the New Testament and through the Old Testament, folks. Verse 23. And it will be that every soul that does not heed the prophet 
shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. In other words, there's going to be a day when Christ is offered to you and you do not accept it. There's going to be a day, if you don't accept it, that you're going to die. And folks, you either accept, there's two places to go. There's either heaven or hell. There's no in middle. So you're either going to one or the other. So you must accept the Lord. And that's what Peter's telling them here. Or you will be destroyed from among the people. And likewise, verse 24, all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel to and his successors onward also announced those days. In other words, he's telling you in here that everywhere in here that he's actually, you, if you look it up, you can find it. You can see Jesus Christ prophesied throughout the Old Testament. Verse 25, it is you who are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And that's back in Genesis 22, verse 18. You can actually study about the and folks, our God is a God of uh, covenant. And he made a covenant with Abraham. He told Abraham, he said, your seed will be numbered as the sand of the sea. All right, verse 26. And this will be the last one tonight. For you first, God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning every one of you from your wicked ways. So we'll close tonight. But with the end of chapter three, when we get started next week, we're actually going to see Peter and John get arrested. We're actually going to see uh, how it's not going to be as easy for them to start continue preaching and being able to walk away. There's going to be there's going to be uh, times that they're going to get arrested, and you're going to see. How these disciples preach until they and until they actually are martyred, and like I said, we we learned about that. I talked to you about that. Eleven of the twelve died a horrible death. That's historic historical facts, folks. The Bible only tells us about James, and Acts will tell us about uh, James the Greater. It'll tell us how he how he was how he was killed. But anyway, you guys have a wonderful night. Uh, Again, thank you all for joining in. I hope that uh, you guys will like and share, and uh, this message will get out. God's word will get out, and everyone have a blessed evening. If you do not have a church, find your church, folks. Get in it. Let's get busy for the Lord. Everyone have a great evening. Good night.